Hi, my name's Ted, and today we're going to talk about moving a Bridgeport milling machine, or really any milling machine, and how I decided to move this into my shop. So, if you like doing anything custom, whether you're building a race car, whether you're just uh, doing projects in general, uh, at some point you're probably going to realize that you need the capability to do something more advanced than what you can realistically do with a drill or with hand tools or things like that. And in a lot of cases, there's stuff that you can get away with, but that you can't necessarily do as complex or as nice looking of cuts as you would like to. And this is really where a milling machine comes in. Um, if you're watching this, you've probably already decided that you need one. But then the hard part, and the reason why I had not bought a milling machine in the however many years I've had a shop, is because these things are really, really heavy. Uh, your standard Bridgeport Series 1 mill is about a 2,000 pound item. This is a Series 2, which is the bigger, beefier, heavier mill, and it weighs close to 5,000 pounds. So why did I choose a Series 2 over a Series 1 when it's so much bigger and heavier uh, and harder to move? Well, the real reason was because this was the one that I found that was uh, a really good price, um, and I felt like it was worth the extra effort to move this because once you put it someplace you're probably not going to want to move it again. Um, a series one really would be just fine for anything that I do but when I was looking around at the different mills that were available locally uh, this one ended up actually being cheaper than uh, any of the series ones that I saw. Uh, why buy a Bridgeport? Well I don't know enough about the off-brand mills to really understand which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, Bridgeport is the name that's synonymous with milling machines, and uh, these things are built extremely well. They'll last forever. Uh, this is certainly older than I am, but um, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's got a few adjustments that I need to make on it still. So how did I move it? Um, I'm gonna show you some time-lapse videos. I didn't do a great job of moving, uh, of doing some live real-time videos while I was moving it. Uh, it was very windy. Audio would have been terrible. Uh, my phone actually got blown over several times, so the videos aren't as good as what I was uh, wanting to uh, get. But the real key is having a hydraulic de drop deck trailer. And you'll see in the video why this was so useful, because um, you, you, with a forklift or something, you can easily enough load uh, one of these onto or off of a larger trailer, but unless you have a forklift at both locations, um, which I don't, and the shop that I bought it from didn't either, that really wasn't gonna be a very good option. With the hydraulic drop deck trailer, the deck goes all the way down to the floor, and so that makes it easier to just literally winch the, uh, winch the mill onto the trailer and then back off. So a couple of tips. When you take a look around, you'll see that, at least on this mill and on others too, you've got a lip around all four sides. So get a big pry bar and you'll be able to get this far enough up that you can put some kind of um, rollers underneath. Now I got some uh, steel tubing, or cast some iron pipe rather, uh, to put underneath it. Uh, remember this thing weighs 5,000 pounds, uh, a series one that weighs 2,000 pounds will work easier. Um, this actually bent the, the pipe, but it still made things easier to drag on and off. Um, having a little bit of oil on the ground can help as well because it'll make it easier to slide. But the big thing was that um, at first we tried using a come along to pull it onto the trailer. Uh, the best thing you can do is position the trailer as close to where you need it to be as possible so you don't have to uh, drag it very far. The come along was uh, not working very well and I think the biggest reason is just because it was old and junky. Um, so my truck has a winch on the front so I uh, then flipped the truck around. We used that. That worked just fine. When we got here, um, you can't necessarily tell but this is a steel building and we ended up using one of the trusses in the back and basically used the come along with that. And for that, pulling it off, it was enough. Uh, biggest things, bring a lot of pry bars, bring a bunch of blocks of wood, bring some heavy straps. 
remember that this is a fairly tough, heavy device and um, you want to make sure it's strapped down really well. But just having the trailer taking the time to position everything where it needs to be and work slowly, uh, it, it really is not that bad of a job to do. A um, couple of other things I'll point out. So like most of these, uh, of these pieces of equipment, this was designed to run off of three phase 220. This was another reason why I didn't buy one for a long time because uh, like most residential shops, homes, whatever, uh, I do not have three phase coming to the house. This is a really simple problem to solve these days. So over here, don't know if you can see, but I've got a controller over here that bought off of Amazon for about, I think it was about 60 or 70 bucks. And what it does is it converts standard single phase 220 into three phase. Um, it also lets you vary the frequency while you're at it, which essentially turns your mill, any, any motor that you're driving with this into a variable speed motor, uh, which is great. It's, this, is, this has a variable speed head already, um, but being able to do it off of that little uh, uh, voltage converter or three phase converter really actually makes things a lot simpler. I'll put a link in the description to the converter that I used. Um, I'm not going to go into a description of how the mill works. Uh, for one, I am by no means an expert. Um, and uh, this is really more to talk about how I moved the mill in. If you have any questions, um, you can put them in the comments. But after, uh, I, I have under $2,000 into this between buying the mill, renting the trailer, and then uh, I just decided to start off buying some cheaper collets and uh, end mills and other things off of Amazon because I figure uh, I'm, I'm new to machining, I'm sure that I'm gonna break stuff. Uh, so I may as well start with some cheaper things and uh, learn off of those. Um, I also added a digital readout to this and I'll do another video that talks about how I installed it. Uh, but hope you found this useful. If there's any specific questions you have, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. But the biggest things are drop deck trailer, take your time, uh, have a come along, have a winch if you can as well, lots of straps, and um, buy your voltage converter. And, and honestly, this was not a big deal. Um, if I'd known it was going to be this simple, I probably would have done it a long time ago. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy the videos. Mm.